Hey ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video. And in this video, I want to talk about emotional intelligence. We know that emotional intelligence has really been making the headlines after the Psychology Today article had talked about how men are lonelier than ever. One of the reasons why men are lonelier than ever is because of women's standards. And unlike Manosphere Talking Points may have said, uh, it's not about being a six-figure earner or penis size or... Um, money or good looks or being six feet tall, really what women are craving from men is emotional intelligence. So I'm going to kind of go over a few key markers of emotional intelligence and how it shows up in the men in my life and how you ladies can better vet for emotional intelligence from those who surround you. So let's start by defining emotional intelligence. So Emotional intelligence, or EQ, your emotional quotient, is defined by how self-aware you are, how great your social skills are with interacting with others. Can you express empathy? Can you diffuse conflicts? Can you handle stress? Are you able to self-regulate and remain disciplined in times where discipline may be challenging? Uh, emotional intelligence is something that we all need from our romantic partners, from those that we work with, and just from even common courtesy from strangers and neighbors. So lacking in emotional intelligence can definitely be something that could be a detriment. I can definitely say the most emotionally intelligent man that I've ever met has to be my dad. His emotional intelligence helped create the woman that I am today. Uh, I can honestly say that my dad is what I would define as a very astute observer. He knows exactly what to say to who and when. How he's developed that skill? from just sitting back, observing, watching, and listening. He more so moves in silence than anything else. So I can definitely say that my dad's observe, be, be able, being able to observe people, situations, interactions between people has helped him to resolve and sometimes even avoid conflict altogether. He also is a really good listener and a really good observer and knows exactly how to treat people based on their behavior. He is very wise and intellectual in the fact that he can observe patterns and then knows how to move accordingly. Him being an emotionally intelligent and astute observer has definitely helped me to be able to navigate people a lot better. When did I first observe my dad's emotional intelligence? It definitely had to be the story uh, when I was in middle school. I put that in my video, Divested Dad. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description box. But basically, uh, my cousin had come to my dad and my uncle, my father's brother, asking for money to buy a really expensive pair of Jordans. His mother, my aunt, had said no to my cousin because he, um, she didn't want him to be in danger. This was at a time where a lot of young Black men were being robbed, assaulted, and sometimes even killed over a pair of Jordans. So my dad had given my cousin, his nephew, a really good piece of advice. And that advice was, never let a pocket change nigga make you $100 decisions. What does he mean by that? Never let someone who is unqualified to dictate details of your life do so, right? Have that type of access to you. Never really let people who have no interest in your safety, have no interest in your well-being, and who are certainly not invested in you or your well-being, to make those decisions type, type of decisions for you. Yeah, it may have not been great to not have the coolest sneakers, but his parents were people who were invested in his safety and therefore what they say should take precedence. So again, when unqualified people feel as if they should make judgments on your life, really, they always tell us don't shoot the messenger, but sometimes you gotta take aim at that messenger. That's part of being emotionally intelligent. One of the ways that I've seen my dad grow in his emotional intelligence definitely has been with being more talkative. Typically, observers talk less, but now that my dad is being more open, more honest about the ideas and the thoughts and the feelings behind his decision-making process, it helps me a lot more as I'm parenting young adults. So I'm grateful for his observational skills and the fact that he's decided to step up his emotional intelligence by being more of a sharer. Another really important lesson that was taught to me by my dad was stop looking for the why. People's behavior towards you should always be the dictator of 
your behavior towards them. So uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the book Life I Swear by Chloe Labueso. A lot of times we're always wondering, why do these pygmies do this? And why do these prolific educated women always choose these thugs? That book really gave the answer to the why. But we have to understand that a lot of times we'll never get the answers to those questions. So it's just really important and it's a better use of our time and our emotional energy to just move on from it. People's behavior towards you is going to always dictate your behaviors towards them. The motivation behind it is not as important. So we have to set up that boundary of not giving people the benefit of the doubt because the only time that it benefits the only person that it benefits sometimes is the other person. So we have to really make sure we're setting that boundary and to not always be looking for the why, but just know how to move on. The next emotionally intelligent man that I would like to bring up, of course, is my husband, because his personality is definitely that of a problem solver. There's a reason why I put the Rubik's Cube up there, because he loves those types of mind games and those types of puzzles. He also watched a documentary on Rubik's Cube competitions. He's very into just problem solving, um, always fixing things, always liking to figure things out. He's always very solution oriented. And I've shared this channel before, this, this story on my channel before, where the time that I first, I can't say that's the time I first met him because I knew of him, but um, we were part of a delegation of athletes leaving from one part of the Asia Command to the other. He was the highest ranking person, so therefore he was the officer in charge. And uh, the pugilist delegation, they had lost their equipment. Like these are like the boxers, the wrestlers, somehow their equipment got lost in transition. Um, so we're in another country and he, they can't find their things. And they're already looking who's to blame, who forgot it, who forgot the bag, who left the bag, who didn't make sure the bag made the transfer of flight, blah, 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 blah. My husband stops the head of the pugilist delegation. He was the NCO, the non-commissioned officer, the sergeant in charge of the pugilist and said, listen, when you're the leader, sometimes the problem is not always your fault, but the solution is always your responsibility. Let's figure out how we can get you guys new equipment for the before the competition. So that's when he tried to find other, um, the Asians, uh, we were in Korea, we were now in Japan. So we had to find like the Korean soldiers who knew how to speak. Japanese and figure out how we can get to a Japanese sporting goods store to find them some of the equipment that they might be able to use. So again, always being a solution oriented person, always looking to solve a problem instead of just complain about it. How I've seen him grow in his uh, emotional intelligence is that knowing that not every problem that's there is there to solve. Sometimes um, you just have to be a good listener and it might not always be a call to action. I think especially living in a house full of women, he's had to learn that. Also too, um, being in the leadership role at work, having um, a small business where he is teaching private batting lessons, and also um, just being a homeowner and all the things that come with that in general. Uh, you don't always have time to do things, so it's okay to delegate to other people. It's okay to hire contractors. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to let other people solve problems that you might not have time to solve. So this home renovation has really taught that, especially at a time when home renovations are more expensive than they have been in the past. Materials and skilled labor are harder to find. I mean, the skilled labor is not as hard to find, but a lot of times the electricians, the plumbers, the contractors don't have assistance um, like or, or people underneath them staffing, even people to answer their phones. So um, it's been a really tough renovation, but it's really taught him that yes, you can do it yourself, but you don't, you shouldn't because you have other responsibilities that are more worthy of your time. So that's one thing I can say about problem solvers. I had this conversation with another content creator, Coriander Yander, um, where she is dating a man from the same culture and that problem solver mentality um, is a blessing. But at the same time, you have to be aware of um, just how to navigate around it. So again, being a problem solver, a positive thing, and the way that problem solvers grow in their emotional intelligence is understanding that not every problem is their problem and that sometimes they may need to sit back um, and delegate or let others come up with solutions on their own. Another really emotionally intelligent man that I have in my life right now has to be definitely a, the planner. 
Okay, um, first I'd like to give a shout out to Dr. Michael. I talked about Dr. Michael on the video Mocha Mommy's New Job. I'll put a link to that. But basically Dr. Michael is our um, medical director. So he's our medical director at the facility that I work at. And he's very, very young to be a medical director. Um, I have a lot of compassion for that situation because being in the military um, during OIF and OEF, a lot of young physicians were put in these leadership roles. So I definitely made it a point to let him know that, hey, I've been here before and I support you because he didn't have a lot of support. Um, Dr. Michael didn't have a lot of support from the other physicians who had more experience than him. They always questioned him, but yet never stepped up to take that leadership role. But one of the things that has helped Dr. Michael excel is his forward thinking and the fact that he's always planning. He had planned a lot of events to bring more staff cohesion so that, yes, he might not get a lot of support from the doctors, but he does get a lot of support from his nursing staff and his auxiliary health staff, his auxiliary health staff, because he makes sure to plan events for them. Um, we planned a World Series party together. We planned um, the company Super Bowl party. We've even planned um, mixers for the graduates and the residents and the interns and externs that come through our facility. So because of his good planning, he has made a lot of alliances. He's also really made sure that in a time of these humongous staffing shortages, he's planned to create things like signing off on provisional licenses. He's planned ahead by making sure he's clearing things financially with human resources so that we can pay our retention bonuses for our staff. He plans ahead. And that's one of the things that I can honestly say about Dr. Michael that really makes my work experience worth it. So I know that there are more lucrative positions out there and I certainly do contract my labor out and take small contract positions here and there. But one of the things that keeps me staying with the facility that I'm at is because Dr. Michael does such a great job planning ahead and gives me a lot of courtesy to be able to balance both home work and contracting. So I really have to say that the planner is definitely a guy that you want in your corner. Also another planner that I can say is definitely being part of a lot more gardening clubs. Um, a lot of people are planning for the future. It seems like getting chickens is the new flex now. Um, being able to you know, plan for your land, plan for your home, plan to be more self-sufficient, plan to make sure that you're not eating all this processed unhealthy food that's gonna be pumped out because of how expensive organic and natural foods are going to be. These guys are certainly planners. Um, from the gardening club here in Austin to the gardening club in Tempe, Arizona, where I was visiting my friend, to some of the online gardening groups, and even here on YouTube. I can honestly say people like Millennial Gardener, who's a civil engineer, who understands the realities of municipalities. Also, Kevin Espiritu, who started, he has the largest online gardening platform internet gardening platform than anyone. So he definitely is uh, definitely a great resource. I'll leave links to their channels in the description box. How they forward plan, how um, even though they might not have whole orchards yet or lots of fruiting trees at this point, they'll show you how to plant them and show and walk you through the process. They're um, planning for seasonal crops, um, how sometimes they plan for things like drought or heavy rains. Um, a lot of the guys in the gardening club Believe it or not, with this drought, the people who kind of came through, the ones who came through were the Middle Eastern gardeners, the guys from Egypt, the guys from Turkey, the guys from Eastern Africa who came in and really talked to us about different types of the guys from Egypt who came through with different types of produce and where we can find those types of seeds for things that can grow in our area, uh, even though we're looking for our drought to last a few more years, even though we just had rain, but it just helps us to plan forward. So forward planners are definitely guys you want to have in your corner. Now, how can the planner grow in his emotional intelligence? It's usually being accepting of the fact that things don't always go to plan. They have to be able to self-regulate and to understand and cope with the disappointment of that even though you plan for things A, B, and C, sometimes D happens. So being able to mo monitor and manage your emotions and the conflicts that arise when things don't go to plan, then that's the way the planner can gr grow in their emotional intelligence. Also, being able to appreciate the moment and the spontaneity 
Um, and also being able to appreciate the present because a lot of times planners are always looking for the next thing. So planners are great emotionally intelligent men, but in ways that they grow is just appreciating the moment that they're in and not always looking to check the next box. When it comes to emotional intelligence, I don't want to leave Gen Z out. And when I think about emotionally intelligent young men, the two individuals that come to mind are Yu-Gi-Oh! Kevin and Homeless Emilio. I talked about these two individuals on my last live stream. They are my daughter's two business partners, I'm putting that in air quotes, who are both talented, intelligent young men, but they dress like... To, to use the word hot mess is an understatement. I understand we are in Austin and people like to keep Austin weird and they are definitely living up to that motto. But Yu-Gi-Oh! Kevin and Homeless Emilio are beginning to grow in their academic and professional careers. And they're starting to understand that not only is it important to be secure in themselves and to represent the artistic Gen Z culture that they're a part of, but it's also important to respect the corporate culture in the areas where they want to grow and in the places they want to develop for their future careers. So seeing them still adhere to their individuality, but still make it a point to tone it down to make sure that the customers and clients that they interact with um, can take them seriously and they want then they can be taken seriously has been quite the journey. And I'm grateful to be able to be a part of their lives to witness it. So emotional intelligence, as well as masculine energy, can manifest itself different ways through different men. And what I want to say is that no one man is ever going to be complete because every single one of us can stand some effort and some time devoted to our own personal growth. This is Mokamami, and I'll see you in the next video.